welcome back to another video in our Web Development Foundation series. In this video, we're going to talk about something called transitions in CSS. Now, we recently talked about animations, and this is going to be pretty similar, but just a little bit different. Um, so let's go ahead and make an index.html, load up some boilerplate code into that. And here for the title, I'm just going to say CSS transitions. And then down here inside of my body, we're just going to have an H1. And we're going to say, let's make a transition. And then after that, down here, I'm going to have a div with a class ball. And then inside of this ball, I'm going to have a span. And my span text is just going to say ABC. Okay, so now if I go ahead and load up that page, I get let's make a transition ABC. So let's add a little bit of styling to this, and then we can go ahead and look at how to make a transition. So to do that, come up here, we'll link our CSS file, save this one before we leave, and then control click on that link, create the file. Um, now in here, again, I'm just going to change my background color to light blue, just because I don't like that bright light the bright white on the screen. Um, okay. And then after that, you'll remember we gave our div class a, or our, we gave our div a class named ball. So in the style.css, I can just say ball. And then inside of this ball, we um, are going to say display, flex, align items, center, and then justify content also center, and that's just going to put our ABC right in the middle. Um, but again, we haven't defined how big this is yet, so we don't know where the middle is. Let's go ahead and do that. We can say our height is going to be 350 pixels. Our width is also going to be 350 pixels. Now, if you save that, you can see our ABC has jumped down to the middle. We can't really see our box here, so let's add a border. I'm going to say two pixels, solid black save that we've got a border on that now and inside of here i can say we want a background color of red save that we've got a red background now and let's see finally let's go ahead and give the span some styling just so we could see that a little bit better um, so we're just going to say span and we can say font size is going to be 2 rem so there we go, that ABC is just a little bit bigger now. Um, and let's say I've got this red square right now. Let's say if I hover over this, I want this square to become a circle. So how can we do that? Well, basically we can add something called a transition. So the way that we do that, first of all, you'll remember we've got, we've got our hover pseudo selector. So if I say ball colon hover, and then inside of here, if I say border radius, and if I want this to be a circle, I need to do um, half of 350 plus two for the border. So I can say 177 pixels, save that. And now if I hover over this, you can see it jumps to a border um, or it jumps to a circle rather, which is what we want. But there's no transition at all, right? This is an instantaneous jump. So what if we want that to change slowly so that we can see it easing in and out, just like our transit, just like our animations in the last video were easing in and out? Well, there's a way to do that. And basically, if we come down here and we say transition, and if I say border radius, so now... Um, we've got our, our transition set to our border radius. So now if we come down here, we have a few more options we can set here. So if we say transition timing function, and this is of course going to be the same where we can say linear or we can say ease in and out, just like our animations. We had that same property there. You should be familiar with that. And then after that, we have our transition duration. So we need to tell it how long we want this to be. So maybe one second, we've got a transition delay. So again, I'll just say one second on that. 
and um, that should actually be everything we need. So if now I come in here and save, and now if I hover over this, you'll see there's a one second delay. And then that transition goes ahead and it changes my border radius into a, um, it changes my square into a circle by adjusting that border radius. So that's exactly what we want. Um, but let's say we wanna change a few more things. Maybe we wanna change the background color too. So I'm starting at red. Let's say on cover, I want this to go blue. So I could say background color, blue, save that. And now if I hover over this again, you can see the blue, it did change to blue, but it changed instantaneously. It didn't ease into that at all. And again, when we pull it off, it changes instantaneously. It doesn't ease into that at all. So why is this happening? Well, basically we've set our transition here to our border radius, but really we actually want our transition to be every property that we're changing. So instead of specifically having a transition on one property, I can come up here and change this to the all keyword. Now, if I save that and hover over this, let's reload our web page. You can see that um, both the border radius and the color changed at the same time and they both eased in and out. And let's just get rid of this delay for now. That's kind of slowing things down. Um, you can see both of these properties are easing in and out. Now, what if we want to change the size of this text as well? So we can do that. If I come down into here, obviously we can do, um, I could do span hover, and then in here change our font size to maybe something like six rem, just a lot bigger. So now if I hover over here, you'll notice nothing changed. And that's because we put our hover on the span and now if I hover over that, it jumps up real big. But let's say I don't want this to jump when I hover the span. I actually want this text to grow when I hover over my button instead. So basically, we don't want that code down here instead, because we want the changes actually inside this um, dot ball hover, because we want it to be whenever we hover over the ball, the span text is going to change rather than whenever we hover over the span. So to do that, Inside this dot ball hover pseudo selector, we can just add a span tag in here. And basically this span tag is gonna target all spans inside of our ball class, which of course this span is inside of this ball class. We could also assign a class to this or an ID and do it that way as well. But since we only have one, I'll just go ahead and do it this way. And in here, if I say font size is six rem and save that, now you can see we've got our transition and whenever I hover over my ball, the text changes, but that text changes immediately. And that's happening because we've got this transition duration and our transition up here that's applied to our ball, but we don't actually have any transition applied to our span. So if we want to apply a transition to that as well, um, I could, just copy all of this and do the exact same thing. Now, if I were to go ahead and save this, you see now I'm hovering over that and that transition is happening on both of them. Um, but really actually, because these are independent HTML elements, my ball and then my span, I can adjust this to whatever I want it to be. So let's say I'm doing um, ease in and out. And then let's say I want this one to be faster. So 0 0.5 seconds. Now you can see our text and our text transition is actually faster than the button. So you can have different transitions on different elements acting at different times. And you can set all of these properties independently. So this is pretty cool. Um, if you go look on some websites, you'll notice lots of transitions, usually not quite this obvious. Um, it's nice to have them a little more subtle, like you'll hover over a button and it will just trans it'll transition over maybe 300 milliseconds to get just a little bit darker and a little bit um, bigger shadow and things like that. And when you hover over links, it'll transition into slightly different colors. 
Um, so you can definitely see this all over the internet. And usually transitions are, they're good. You want them all over your website, but you also want them to be much less kind of in your face than this one, subtle. You want them to be subtle. So this is how you do transitions. And one more thing that I'll mention here, um, just like on your animation, we had the shorthand one-liner. If I wanted to take all of this and stick it in one line, we can comment all of that out. And then down here, if I type transition here, um, I can also do the same thing. So I can say transition and I can say um, all, and let's say one second. And then after that, I could say ease in and out. And then this last one is gonna be my delay. So maybe 0 0.5 second, we'll set that. Now, if I were to save that, you could see I've got basically all of this code here um, with the exception of this is obviously different. But if I were to save that like that, um, all of this code, all four of these lines, I can do in just one line. And that's just our shorthand way of assigning transitions in our CSS code. So hopefully you found this video useful. Leave any comments down below or questions if you have them, and I'll try to get back to you on that. And hopefully you're learning a lot, not, not just in this video, but in this whole course. So stick with it. Definitely worth learning. If you've made it this far, then you're doing pretty good. So we will see you in the next video.